Are you single man then? Very single, Neil, yes. You're not really on Tinder, eh? You got the Not anymore. Bit- I used to be. Yeah. Why? You're one of the best known faces in the country. You walk into a bar, women are throwing themselves at you. <laughs> well, um, maybe. Well, yeah, sometimes, uh, Neil. <laughs> not often enough. What are you doing on <laughs> Tinder? Oh, there's a lot of dating apps out there that uh, are pretty good. Are pretty good. So, I was, you know, I just thought I'd give it a try. The, you never know, Neil. You do so. Now we'll, some we'll, people that we know, or that I know, maybe some of your friends too, they've found love on some of these dating apps. Who? I'm saying, have any of your friends? Some of my friends have. Who would that be? Oh, you wouldn't know them. Do you oh. know John? You don't know just a couple of mates that have found. John was a dodgy bookie. Was he? <laughs> no, no, not that John. <laughs> but I've had a couple of mates that have found on some of these dating apps oh, that good. have, which is great. That is good. Now we'll we'll deal with this and then move on to some of the uh, cricket stuff. But you you do come back to sex quite a bit in the book. You uh, say yep. you love it. Yep. Which is not all that unusual. I no, think. well I'm male, um, and I. And I do enjoy it. But Tiger um, Woods was a mate of yours, and he said he was a sex addict. Do you think you're a sex addict? Oh, I'm not a friend of Tiger's. I do know Tiger. I've had dinner with him a couple of times, uh, and he was very interesting to talk to. Um, no, I don't think I'm a sex addict, no. I don't know what a sex addict is, do you? Um, I, I suppose anyone with an addiction um, can't do without it and is obsessed by it and upsets their life. Is that a, you know, it upsets people in their life. Well, it's um, had a fair impact on your life. Yeah, it has. Um but I, you know, I was in the jungle for seven weeks, and I was uh, okay. On, on the, I was okay, so I think I'll be all right now. What happened the day you got out? Um, I, no, I no, ate. no. I don't. I know. I <laughs> ate because I dropped thirteen kilos in the jungle, so I ate for a long period of time. It's very, not easy for divorced um, parents for children. It's not very easy for them. It's going to be a tough time when, especially when their father's in the limelight playing cricket for Australia. Um, and what comes with that territory, you know, people following them. You know, I, it's disappointing certain sections, not all, but certain sections of the media and the press and photographers um, following me walking the kids to school and sh- jumping in front of them and taking photos of the kids. Like, they can do whatever they want to me. Um, but when they're young children walking to school and then they say, Dad, we don't want you to walk to school because we don't want that to happen again. You apolo- now, that's, you that's, that's really disappointing. You apologise to them in the book. Is that what you're apologising for or you're apologising for the, the tabloid publicity or what? No, I, I, you know, one of the toughest things to write in the book is when you let down your family. You know, when you let down someone, um, you know, any divorced parents, there's faults on both sides. You know, it wasn't just all my fault. Um, but I take responsibility for it. And it was, it's, it's tough to live with knowing that you hurt your children and you let them down. Um, so that was tough to write. Um, but in a funny sort of a way, Neil, that it's, it's sort of hard to get teenage children and when they get older to talk to them and have a conversation about anything. Um, so to, through it all, there's the silver lining and the good things about uh, divorce. If there is anything good things, you've got to try and take the positives. Is my communication now and the way my children and I talk with each other and how we communicate, um, we talk about everything, absolutely everything. Your passion for leadership comes through when you talk about your time with the Royals. Mm-hmm. In fact, you suggest that you were lured into yeah, coming back when you weren't, weren't sure you really mm-hmm. wanted to keep playing with the, with the message from the owner or one of the organisers yep. that uh, you could prove you were the best captain Australia <laughs> never had. Yeah, did, it was... did it hurt that much, not being Australian captain? No, it didn't hurt me. I, I, I have, you know, I don't sit but there going... you go, love it. You can read and you can see this, the passion in the book. Yeah, but it doesn't about... mean you crave it. It doesn't mean you go after it and say, I should have been captain or I wish I had a... I don't think like that. But you would have been if you'd been a bit well, different, wouldn't you? I, I you... enjoyed doing it, but it doesn't necessarily... It doesn't mean that I wanted it. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Because yeah. I... When I had the opportunity, whether it would be for Victoria, whether it be the Melbourne Stars, Hampshire, Rajasthan Royals, uh, at times for Australia, I always believe that you've got to back your players and try and get the best out of your players. And that's the that's what a leader should do. And then, you know, in the tough times, lead by example and all those things. Um, and I always thought the people that played when I was captain, un, you know, in our side, and I was the captain of that side, I think they all had a sense of fun. They had a sense of we're going to play to win. And we all gelled in together and we all uh, had a lot of fun together trying to win. Keep, and, it, keep um, it simple is your message, isn't it? When you absolutely. Say, keep the game simple and, 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 and the in enjoyment. Anything, keep it simple. Yeah. You know, I think too many people complicate things and I know it's a little bit hard in this day and age with all the political correctness going around and all those things. And I think one of the key things that I'm proud of is that, and I think why people still like me, 
is because I've never pretended to be something I'm not. I've always been honest. I've always been straight. Um, I've always been straight up. And what you see is what you get. And perception doesn't always equal reality. Yes, as I said before, there's been some silly headlines over the years. And, you know, I bought that on myself. But I, I, I like to think that um, when people read the book, they get a better understanding of who I am, what I stand for. And, um, you, and hopefully a lot of the feedback I've had so far is, yeah, I really enjoyed your book because it's we, we miss you. You know, we love watching you play and we miss having you around. You know, Australian cricket at the moment, I think, has got some serious issues as in not just their performance, but I think in any successful business, you need the foundation to be strong. And at the moment, I think Cricket Australia is probably devaluing shield cricket. And the reason I say that is that I think the selectors, um, Pat Howard, Cricket Australia, are pulling players out. They're letting them play one innings and then pulling them out in the second innings. It's not... If you're playing shield cricket, you play for those four days and you play it hard and you get what you need out of that game and you play to win for your state. And I think there's not enough uh, of the cricketers at the moment getting into schools. There's not enough cricketers, both boys and girls, they should be going to schools. There should be a lot more grassroots cricket. There should be a priority on grade cricket and shield cricket. International players should be made to play all that because... It's very important for people to learn how all that works. Well, what if we put you in charge? In all seriousness, some years down the track, and I know you haven't had the best of time with the mm-hmm. administrators, and you can see why at times. Well, absolutely. And just because some of that stuff uh, might have happened, it doesn't mean that my, I don't know what I'm talking about when I talk of cricket. Of course. And your success as a leader with mm-hmm. with various times, particularly the Royals, would it? do you think it could be tempting at some stage? I don't know. Um, chair yeah, look, chair of the to, ACB or whatever it's called. Well, I'd, it? I'd love to be involved with Australian cricket. Absolutely love to help them out um, in whatever capacity that is, whether it be coaching, whether it be spin bowling, whether it be mentoring, whether it help young cricketers, whatever it might be. Uh, I'd love the opportunity. And I'd, I'd, do, it, I'd do it at the moment without any title or getting paid or anything, I do it because I love it. And whether it's a young spinner, I'll go and meet them and have a session in the nets or a young cricketer might ring up and ask for some advice and I'll do that. Or it might be, I do it a lot of sportsmen. Well, as you make the point, look, Richie Benno did that his whole life, didn't mm. he? And he, he, in fact, you rang him at one stage and yep. said, look, I won't ring you, but you need anything, ring me. That's right. Which is a great approach. Yeah, and, yeah. That, and that's sort of how I work. Yeah. Um, you know, if someone wants something or an advice or whatever it might be, I'm here. If you call me, I'll chat to you as long as you want. But I'm not going to go chasing and, and search you. But if you want it, I'm, I'm here. Is it true that you were taken to the flower drum once and rang up and ordered a pizza to be delivered to the best restaurant in Melbourne? <laughs> um, I know I've had nachos in um, – I had nachos at uh, – what was one of those? Not um, at Crown. What was one of those? Rockpool. No, it wasn't Rockpool. Um, what, what's it called? The uh, – doesn't matter. It's I not. Can't. It's one of those really nice restaurants there at Crown, and, uh, and you got nachos I had delivered. nachos there. Yeah. Shane Warne, Peter Hudson looked after a young Shane. How many did you kick? Sixteen in a goal. And again, yeah, I think I, I kicked a few in front of Peter Hudson, and uh, I wanted to be. Uh, we were all billeted out because I was uh, sixteen or seventeen years of age, and unfortunately, he was running a pub. And so the the competition wouldn't let me go and stay with Peter Hudson. He does listen a bit. If he calls in, I'll put him in touch. Yes, I'm sure he'll remember me running around on the football field well, not, 30 not years ago, kids kicking, kicking eight goals and 16 and all that stuff. But Overweight? Um, he was great. Were you overweight then? Uh, no, I only got Super overweight. Fit. I was fit uh, up until 1989 when I went to England. I went over 77 kilos, uh, 78 kilos and came back 99. Pork pies and beer? Yeah, 21 kilos I put on in six months. <sighs> That's good effort, that. Well done on the book. Enjoy. Yeah, thanks, Neil. Shane Warne, No Spin, written with Mark Nicholas, is the book.